Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Dharma Geosphere. Today I will be interacting with you on uh, modernism and uh, postmodernism in geography. Uh, this is the last chapter of uh, the perspectives in human geography and uh, this is also an important um, chapter. Quite a few questions come almost every year and then so uh, please be uh, attentive. So according to the Human Geography uh, Dictionary, uh, Modernism uh, basically uh, describes uh, uh, what is called as a constellation of uh, power and knowledge and uh, social practices uh, and uh, was uh, as prevailed during the uh, 6th and 7th centuries and uh, at the end of the 7th century modernism became kind of a social order uh, in the entire uh, planet and it came to the 8th uh, century uh, it got uh, interrelated with words like uh, contemporaneity and uh, novelty uh, and also uh, progress towards uh, truth, uh, beauty and uh, just life but uh, modernism had its own uh, <coughs> Uh, criticisms uh, both inside and outside. Marx for uh, example said all that uh, is solid uh, melts out in the air um, showing that uh, the modernism is a very self-destructive uh, uh, process. Uh, modernism uh, <clears throat> is intertwined uh, with the objectives and uh, processes of uh, um, colonialism and uh, oppressive uh, imperialism. So much so uh, <clears throat> that uh, um, a lot of uh, uh, negativity regarding uh, modernism was being uh, um, spread along uh, uh, those times and um, besides uh, being uh, part of the colonialist and the um, oppressive imperialist it also um, was uh, ethnocentric, uh, <clears throat> so much so uh, that um, uh, uh, it became part of the, the uh, beliefs and uh, the um, uh, processes of uh, the uh, European uh, uh, imperialistic ideas. The uh, modernism always had its uh, dark side and uh, many of the geographers argue that uh, <coughs> uh, the um, European uh, uh, modernism uh, is a kind of uh, um, <coughs> the European modernism uh, has um, confined uh, the human agency, the um, uh, uh, what you call the social conscience and uh, also the um, uh, uh, knowledge of uh, um, uh, the uh, people uh, in a um, uh, confined uh, uh, human agency uh, which um, um, was uh, confined to a kind of an iron cage of uh, bureaucracy and also the regulations. So, uh, uh, because of the, the so much of uh, the confinement of uh, all the um, uh, beliefs, ideas, um, social practices, etc., in this iron cage, there came uh, the postmodernism came as a response to address these uh, uh, ills and uh, brought in some kind of a homogeneous uh, <coughs> way of uh, uh, looking at the world. Uh, the real world and then addressing the uh, uh, dysfunctions and uh, the disjunctures that were occurring in the uh, human life and uh, in the re uh, real world and how to address them. So I will be now uh, talking more about the postmodernism, what are the characteristics, how it evolved, how it went about and uh, what uh, uh, better did it bring compared to the uh, modernism. So, uh, as I said, uh, modernism uh, is described as a particular constellation of power, knowledge and social practices 
that were prevalent during the 6th and 7th centuries and uh, due to the various uh, um, ills of uh, modernism, uh, postmodernism came as a response to address uh, the um, issues uh, of modernism. So, um, for, from, we will now move on from modernism to uh, understand what exactly the postmodern uh, geography was. So, postmodernism is represented as a response to modernism as a homogenizing force laying stress on the uh, discontinuities and disjunctures characteristics of uh, characteristic of everyday life uh, in the real world so <clears throat> one of the point was skepticism regarding claim to intellectual superiority prevalent in the <clears throat> modernism era was uh, strongly addressed by the uh, postmodern geography as you will understand uh, in the later part of the presentation the postmodern methodology is based essentially on the uh, strat uh, strategy of uh, deconstruction that is deconstruction is nothing but a destabilizing method of throwing into doubt the authoritarian claims of tradition say for example the claim of intellectual superiority that is some so certain races were born intellectually superior this is the kind of a tradition which has been going on for a very long time so through these methods of uh, method of uh, deconstruction uh, they are able to um, uh, destabilize such myths and old traditions uh, which had rock solid foundation for a very long time then postmodernism is also viewed as an actually an epoch that is an historic era in which changes occur in culture and philosophy which are sought uh, located in very process of the evolution of economy and politics not just at the regional national level but at the worldwide world global level then uh, <clears throat> stresses uh, the postmodernism uh, stresses openness to a range of opinions in social inquiry artistic experimentation and political em empowerment as i told you earlier this was a uh, kind of a, a confined human agency earlier wherein all the um, uh, artistic uh, uh, talents uh, and intellectual and knowledge were all confined within that iron cage of bureaucracy and uh, <coughs> the regulations so postmodernism geography is now closely linked to the new regional geography the difference between the old style regional different uh, initiation in geography of the hetner hashon era and the present day postmodernist regional geography lies in that while the former was indifferent to everyday experience of societal relationship there is now a declared commitment to the understanding of the condition of man in particular places and the ways that our spaces are socially constructed. So there could be a question like this, uh, uh, the difference between uh, regionalism of uh, pre-modern era and the post-modern regionalism. This entirely uh, different here. It's more of a human construct wherein I have said truth, uh, uh, beauty and just life was beginning to happen in the post-modern era. Then uh, postmodernism is also pronouncedly anti-spatial science of the spatial uh, science search for patterns, law, patterns and laws behavior. So uh, this is not um, uh, restricted to uh, the Hetna Hashon uh, views of uh, the um, regionalist um, or um, a regional view. It is totally different. It is in fact anti-spatial. Postmodernism does not aspire to generate any grand theory of universal application. There can't be any uniform or a un, uh, universal theory which can be applicable to everyone in every place and location. Instead of universal theory, the emphasis on postmodernism is on the contemporaneity of social process over time and space. As I said, the two more, most important things of novelty and contemporaneity actually were uh, more um, emphasized in the postmodernism. The postmodern uh, geography is characterized. There are about um, six characteristics. Uh, all of them are just nothing but uh, application of common sense. As you can understand, if you have understood the basic principle of what uh, postmodernism was, you can easily put in those characters. First was um, postmodernism corrected the bias towards historicism by putting space in the center of explanation and spatial dialectics alongside the historical dialectics. And then postmodernism put a previously marginalized geography at the center of social science by rest restoring spatiality alongside historical and critical social theory. 
Then postmodern geography laid emphasis on uh, geo social changes, population growth, hunger, disaster, all basic needs of uh, the human society at that time. And the postmodern geography shifts from macro to micro level, also from general to specific. So this is the heart of uh, the way uh, modern modernism was <coughs> evolved into postmodernism, that is micro to macro and general to specific. Postmodern geography has thus moved away from the spatial analysis to the social theory. Postmodernism stresses the importance of geography and spatiality by championing the differences. Then later, uh, Gregory um, in the early 90s identified uh, three distinguishing features of postmodernist thought in geography. So they could be a question like this of uh, <coughs> the uh, Gregory's uh, view of postmodernism. So you just have to um, write in these three important characteristics which are actually very well defined, very comprehensive and also at the same time um, catch up the uh, essence of what postmodernism is. The first, the space-time specific, uh, specificity in social explanation. This implies that postmodernist thought in social science insists on understanding of a world which is meaningful to the people who live within it. See, he clearly brings in that it has to be an understanding of the people who are living in a particular place and a particular location. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Secondly, postmodernism insists on distancing itself from Totalization, as that we um, um, understood earlier, that I'm not having a universal or a very sweeping generalized theories. No, no totalization. It holds that the ebb and flow of human history is not reduced to the marinate movements of single structural principle, whatever its location. You understand this word uh, marinate movements? Marinate movements are those hanging puppets. So you can't, you can't no longer be puppets of that uh, iron caged uh, bureaucratic regulations and all that. It has to be free. Outside the uh, marinade principle. Marinade principle is simple structural lines. Uh, just how you play uh, puppets in the puppet show. It's not going to be like that anymore in the postmodern. Thirdly, the postmodern human geography represents a critique of the spatial science. It is not a continuation of it, but rather focuses on essential spatiality of social life. Even if there is a question related to the um, geography as a spatial science or spatial analysis in geography or anything related to spatial, you should bring in the concepts of um, uh, postmodernism, which actually moved away from the uh, spatial uh, um, spatiality of uh, social life in uh, geography. So that is when you will get uh, um, good marks because you are. Mm, answer is enriched, it not only just covers speciality but it also covers the postmodernism which was totally against and in fact it threw away that uh, concept of uh, speciality uh, in geography and brought in speciality of social life. So that's all guys, um, as far as the postmodernism is concerned, there will be a question on it. Directly or indirectly, whether you uh, um, learn it or or uh, don't learn it, you will have to uh, attempt this question uh, even if it is indirect. So you understand how it has moved away from this patient science all through the evolution of all these chapters which we have studied were based on the spatial analysis uh, in geography where here uh, the postmodernism uh, is essentially uh, against the uh, spatiality of uh, geography as a social science, but it is uh, the essential spatiality of social life. That is the life where people who live within it uh, matter much more or than the uh, artificial geography corridors uh, that have been uh, put up during the uh, modernistic and the pre-modern era. So that is how uh, it is, um, guys, I've made it simple and to the point. Uh, remember these three points of uh, Gregory and those general six points related to postmodernism and the, uh, I've also given you the um, uh, um, negative um, issues related to modernism, so just bring in, so just keep this in mind. You just have another few days uh, before the exam. As I promised, I have completed the entire are the uh, Dixit uh, of uh, geographical thought. Um, so um, there can't be any questions from you all that uh, where to start the book and where to end. I have covered all 
the chapters one by one through each video. Uh, just plug in and keep listening to it. You will get the essence of what is there in the book. Apart from this, I have consulted the other books and uh, research papers as well. So as far as the content is concerned, it is all with you. So any question related to the um, section on uh, perspectives in human geography, just go and kick and just be on the top. So, um, I'll catch up with you on uh, theories or uh, whatever uh, you have been uh, emailing me about what I should uh, um, uh, interact with you and what I do on online classes and what we do here. But I'm very happy that uh, I have completed this book um, uh, and uh, to my satisfaction I have given you the essential point, the essence of what is there in each of the concepts. And I'm sure uh, if you go through all these videos, you will do very well. Your entire answer um, writing will be based on how well you do this section. All other sections are very routine kind of things, but this needs a different perspective, a different understanding, a different in-depth knowledge. So um, that's how you're going to improve the exam. Pick this, always write, uh, question related to the perspectives in human geography first so that you carry that impression throughout the uh, paper and then don't forget to um, make the answers uh, innovative put in your flow charts uh, diagrams and uh, whatever uh, that you can do to enrich your answers and more importantly examples almost every concept I have given examples so please note that and do it so guys uh, all the best I will uh, try to um, do the analysis of uh, geography paper 1 um, maybe on 17th itself uh, let's see how the uh, questions are I'm sure you will all do very well question uh, paper 1 I am not worried at all paper 2 can sometimes be very vague because uh, the students get, to ca get carried away by the general studies portion of geography but we have nothing to do with that here we come we paper two just put in the uh, uh, map uh, in the diagram within the map itself put in those points then illustrate uh, and then put in your diagrams that that's how you it will be straight away different from the general studies uh, answers in the geography section so that's all uh, for today guys uh, bye and all the best for you all on the uh, 17th go and crack the exam bye